Science never ends, welcome to the series of videos about Nobel Prize winners, a group of interesting and inspiring scientists. Have you ever heard of Romain Roland? You must have heard of his biographies of immortal artists such as Beethoven, Michelangelo, Leo Tolstoy, and so on. Today, we are going to meet this great writer. Roland was born in Clamacy, Nivre, in 1866. He received his doctoral degree with his thesis in 1895. For the next two decades, he taught at various lycées in Paris. In 1903, he was appointed to the first chair of music history at the Sorbonne. He also briefly directed the musical section at the French Institute in Florence in 1911. These experiences may have inspired the love for the great musicians that guide him to write their biographies. His first book was published in 1902 when he was 36 years old. From 1902 to 1904, Roland devoted himself entirely to writing. Roland published a biography on Beethoven in 1903. Although this work was partly based on the life of the composer, it also took elements from Mozart's and Wagner's careers. He was awarded the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1915 as a tribute to the lofty idealism of his literary production and to the sympathy and love of truth with which he has described different types of human beings. Beethoven was born in Bonn in 1770. He had a tenor father and a servant mother. Unluckily, Beethoven spent a youth full of suffering. In everyday life, the young Beethoven saw his beloved mother subjected to an alcoholic husband. Upon the premature death of his mother, Beethoven became the head of the family, charged with all the family responsibilities. The only happy thing in his sad childhood was his brilliant musical talent that blossomed as he grew up. However, we know that Beethoven was deaf from the age of 26. His ears rustled night and day, and he was racked with pains in his bowels. His hearing was gradually weakening. But what doesn't beat you makes you stronger. Despite his hearing loss, Beethoven managed to create his greatest work, the Ninth Symphony, entitled Symphony with a final chorus on the Ode to Joy. So, even in the depths of despair, Beethoven was able to overcome his sorrows to create music meant to bring joy to others. Romain was drawn to Beethoven's talent when he was a child. The fact that the young Roland admired Beethoven is evident in his correspondence. In 1901, he went to the Beethoven Festival in Mainz. In Bonn, after seeing the humble attic where the composer was born, Romain was shocked by the sordid aspect of Beethoven's daily life. He skimmed through letters and other documents that described the musician's suffering and struggles. In his hotel room, Romain immerses himself, as he says himself, in reading works on Beethoven, which he buys like a child as soon as he sees them, without being able to resist. Interestingly, he was more impressed by the composer's moral strength than those well-known works. As he writes, Beethoven was a master of justice and sincerity. He was one of the most steadfast carriers of God. Roland likes virtues such as sincerity and courage. In his own life, he always sought to be sincere and brave, criticizing those who were easily discouraged or hypocritical. Because of his deafness, Beethoven saw the world as it was, but his optimistic beliefs about the future drove him to resist life's misfortunes. Furthermore, with a free and independent soul, he acted according to his beliefs, resisted disappointment, and was never defeated. Beethoven had been fighting with the sufferings imposed on him in his own life and never compromised. Never. He could find pleasure even through the coming pain. In the eyes of the world, this great composer may have been poor, sick, or lonely, but he was nonetheless victorious over his destiny and over suffering. The concept of pleasure and bitterness is the spirit that Roland praised most from the inner life of Beethoven. He decided to write down Beethoven's life to benefit mankind and help people who will not give in to obstacles. The writer goes so far as to compare Beethoven to Jesus Christ. There are figures that cannot be staged, it seems to me, without a kind of sacrilege, Christ is one of them, Beethoven is another. Unlike common novels, Roland does not call heroes those who have triumphed by thought or by force in his work. 
He thought heroes are only those who were powerful, unbeaten, and never gave up at heart. Roland chose the extraordinary career of Beethoven as material for his first book. He hoped to write the biography of the German composer to inspire his readers to face the continuing difficulties in life. He always held the belief that with steely determination, anyone can overcome daily difficulties. Therefore, in the small biography of 80 pages, Roland focuses on the problems that the composer encountered, not on the great music he made. Roland hopes audiences will gain courage from the composer's positive attitude to life. He studied the lives of artists, and after doing so wrote, the more we learn about the existence of great creators, the more impressed we are at the extent of the unhappiness that hangs over their lives. The greater their suffering, the fuller the development of their greatness. Life is hard. It is a continuous struggle for all those who cannot come to terms with mediocrity. For the most part, it is a painful struggle, lacking sublimity, lacking happiness, fought in solitude and silence, oppressed by poverty, domestic care, and by crushing and gloomy tasks, demanding an aimless expenditure of energy, joyless and hopeless. Roland's heroic biographies build these bridges between man and man, between suffering and suffering. To the nameless sufferers, he wishes to show the capricious fate behind those brilliant names. Those stories will give solace. From their spirits radiate energy and goodness. Even if we did not study their works and hear their voices, from the words in Roland's paper, we should know that life is never greater than suffering. And we all can be heroes in our own stories. Just as Roland writes, there is but one heroism on earth, to know life and yet to love it. The influence of his writings on American literature was considerable and continues to exist today. His greatest works were only 40,000 words. His name was tightly attached to pulp fiction and hard-boiled crime fiction. Do you know who is he? Do you want to show your research progress to more scholars? Contribute an entry that will be linked to your paper on the Encyclopedia platform providing an opportunity for over 35,000 scholars to access and explore your research. Have you ever tried to show your latest research in a vivid way? Encyclopedia SciPlayer provides a service with which you can transfer your research to a live video format. Do you want to publish a new paper? Encyclopedia has an international, peer-reviewed, and open access journal. Do you require a discount when you publish research in journals? Anyone who contributes to Encyclopedia can obtain vouchers for MDPI Journal's article processing charges. Encyclopedia aims to create an open access knowledge sharing platform for all scholars. To find more information, search for encyclopedia.pub.